Article One, Section Two. Common Interpretation, by Brandley A. Smith, and Daniel P. Tokaji. The U.S. Constitution has become so familiar to Americans and so influential around the world that it is easy to forget what the revolutionary document was at the time of its enactment. Nothing better illustrates this than Article One, Section Two, which established U.S. House of Representatives, which was extraordinary in 1787. Its Article One, Section Two provided for direct election of House members by the people of the several states. Under the Articles, Confederation delegates to the Confederation Congress were selected as state legislatures directed. Akio Reed. Armour, American Constitution、uh, Biography, 2005. Only two states give the people a say in the selection of、uh, delegates. Elsewhere, the state legislatures choose Confederation Congress delegates. While some members of the Constitution Convention support giving state legislatures control over the selection of House members, James Madison and James Wilson successfully argued that the direct elections. Were necessary to connect the national government to the people. The Heritage Guide to the Constitution, 2005. This was a radical departure from most states' pre-constitutional practice. Of course, not all of the people. Um, were eligible to vote at the time of ratification. Article One, Section Two made the qualification for voting U.S. House elections the same as those for voting in the large branch of the state legislature. That effectively excluded women as well as many free、um, African Americans and Native Americans.、It、also excluded some white men who were barred from voting by property ownership requirements. That was in the norm. In 1787, some freebirds were favored of making property ownership a qualification for voting in U.S. House elections, but Ben Franklin reminded them that many common people had joined the fight for the independence. For independence, a uniform suffrage requirement was ultimately rejected due to fears that it would lead some states to reject the Constitution altogether. The compromise tying the qualification for voting U.S. House elections to the qualifications for voting state legislative elections allowed roughly two thirds of white men, but were a few others to vote. The answer, Kingster. The right to vote, the concept history of democracy in the United States. Nevertheless, these direct elections were a significant. Milestone in the development of democracy. Many more people were eligible to vote in U.S. House elections than was the case under English law. In the ensuing decades, states moved rapidly towards universal suffrage for white men. The Fifteenth Amendment, adopted in 1870, prohibited the denial of the vote on account of race, although in practice African Americans. Were denied that right in southern states for much of the 20th century. Women gained the constitutional right to vote with the 19th Amendment in 1920. The short list of qualifications for serving in the U.S. House was also a step towards a more inclusive democracy. Article 172 imposes the three qualifications for members of the House. Members must a one be at least 25 years old. Two, have been a citizen for seven years, and three, be an inhabitant of the state from which he is selected. It was less stringent than those applicable to state legislatures in most states, all but the one of those,、uh, one of which required property ownership. The Supreme Court later held that neither Congress nor the states may enter Article One, Section Two's list of qualifications. Powell versus. McCormack, 
1969. U.S. term limits in cooperation versus Thornton. 1995. To ensure that the House members were accountable to the people, Article 162 provided for relatively frequent elections to take place every two years. This concept. This contrasted with the terms of senators under Article 163, which may take place every six years. The constitutional requirement that the House members be select, elected by the people of the several states eventually became the basis for the U.S. Supreme Court to hold that a congressional district must be as equal in population as possible. One person, one vote. Westbury versus Sanders, 19. 64. One person, one vote rule apply with special rigor to U.S. House elections. In the case of Stamblers and congressional district must be closer to mathematical equality than a than state legislative district, which are subject to the one person, one vote requirement under the Equal Protection Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment. While a state's legislative districts are generally presumed to be constitutional if the total deviation from population equality is less than 10 percent, the court has rejected even the tiniest departures from population equality in joint U.S. House districts. Congressional redistricting plans with a deviation of less than 1 percent have been deemed unconstitutional under Article 1, Section 2. See example, Carter v. Dangit. 1983. To ensure that states were represented in proportion to their population, Article 162 required an actual enumeration of people every 10 years, what we today know as the U.S. Census. It also provided that each state shall have at least one U.S. House member. Article 162 also included one of the most infamous provisions of the U.S. Constitution, providing that. A、uh, state's direct taxation and representation in the U.S. House would be determined according to the whole number of free persons and the three fifths of all other persons. Everyone understood that the other persons were slaves. Yet the import of this clause is sometimes misunderstood. And the convention slaveholding states wanted to count slaves for a proportion purposes, which would have increased the number of representatives to which the some states were entitled. Because slaves were not allowed to vote, this would have given eligible voters in southern states relatively more power than those in northern states, making abolition less likely. Would also have given southern states a greater voice in selecting the president because the state representation in Congress determines its representation in the electoral college under Article Two, Section One. At the same time, the southern states did not want to count slaves at all for purposes of determining the direct taxes that the federal government could lay on the states because that would increase their tax burden. The decision to count sixty percent of the slave population actually reduced the power of the southern states compared to what it would have been if the entire slave population had been counted. The Three Fifth Clause was eventually repealed by the Fourteenth Amendment, under which states are represented in Congress in proportion to their population and reduced to the extent that the right vote is denied to male citizens to the. One and、uh, older, except for participation in rebellion or other crime. Finally, Article One Section Two gives the U.S. House the sole power of impeachment, including impeachment of the president. Even the highest official in the land is accountable to the people, subject to removal from office for high crimes and misdemeanors. On Article One. Article Two, Section Four. The House has exercised the power to impeach the President twice, with respect to President Andrew Johnson in 1888 and President Bill Clinton in 1998. On both occasions, the President was subsequently acquitted by the U.S. Senate, which had the sole power to try impeachments under Article One, Section Three. 
manner of debate. The states and Congress, as considered on interpreter, interpreters, by Bradley A. Smith. The substance of Article One Six Two was among the most controversial subjects at the Constitution Convention for many years. After it was among the least controversial parts of the Constitution. In the twentieth century, however, the problem grows. More apportionment for congressional districts, large population disparities between congressional districts, draw increasing public attention and calls for a judicial solution. Nevertheless, for many years. The Supreme Court held that the drawing for congressional districts was a political question for which there was no judicial remedy. For example, Collegrove v. Green, nineteen forty-six. The Supreme Court changed track in the landmark nineteen sixty-two decision in Baker v. Carr, holding that questions of legislative reapportionment was just was justiciable, and in Westbury v. Sanders, nineteen sixty-four, the court held that a one person by vote was a constitutional required standard for apportionment. The court, quoting James Wilson, defined this, defined this as when a given member of a citizens in one part of the state chooses as many representatives and are chosen by the same member, in the same number of citizens in any other part of the state. Westbury held that congressional districts should be equal in size and near, nearly as it is practicable to mathematical precision. The concept of one person one vote was resoundingly and appropriately embraced by the American public in the wake of Westbury and other decisions. However, while the concept is simple, it raises a number of questions that have yet to be resolved. For example. In Westbury and the later decisions, the Supreme Court uses the terms "voters," "citizens," and "population" almost interchangeably. But two districts that have equal population will rarely have equal numbers of voters, since many people, notably children, non-citizen immigrants, and in many states, convicted felons, will not be eligible to vote. Although the court As usually spoke in terms of equally win votes, in fact, it's treating since Wednesday has been based on equal population, those votes are not equally win. For example, after the twenty ten census, Texas' the first state senator district has approximately five hundred seventy four thousand eligible voters, while the twenty seven district has approximately Three hundred seventy-two eligible voters. Even those district met the Winsbury standard for near perfect population equality in Evenville versus Abbot, 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 two thousand sixteen. Plaintiffs sought an order requiring the state to use voting population rather than total population for restricting purposes. The Supreme Court held that as a Texas districting plan relying on equal population was constitutional. While the court decision in Emmerville can be readily justified by history and tradition, it does suggest that the court's long-standing rhetoric of equal voting power may be misguided. An individual vote in Texas, the first district, clearly is worth less than the vote in the In the twentieth district, in that it has less impact on the outcome of a race. Even though the plaintiffs argued that a voting population 